What's going on guys, Winter Kills here and welcome back to a brand new deck profile video. Today I'm super excited to be bringing you guys an update to my Rika Sinavalon deck. Now of course we are still fulfilling those donation incentives from our last one deck one month and one of those involved me revisiting this deck for one series of Saturday Night Locals and I figured of course I would do an updated profile for it and I'm definitely going to do a test hand video with it as well so you guys can see how the deck functions under the new forbidden and limited list obviously with both dryas and healer going to one now these were hits that i wasn't super happy to see because i do love playing this deck and i enjoyed playing the deck the way it was obviously before the hits i know the deck that way and anything else is going to be completely foreign to me and the deck's got to change but honestly I'm kind of happy about that because I really wasn't looking forward to playing this deck on cruise control. I wanted something to be different about it and most of the Ricka decks up until the ban list were pretty much completely the same. They played pretty much exactly the same but this deck has some forced change upon it and that definitely makes things a little bit more interesting. Now the hits that did come to this deck didn't change it so drastically that it's going to look like a completely different deck. There are a few minor changes, really one change to the main deck, and a couple obviously that had to be made in the extra deck to get this deck back in working order. And we'll talk about what those changes were, of course, when we get into the profile. And before we do that, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor over at Imperium Duelist. Link to their site down in the description, as well as a discount code. You can use Winter Kills 10 off at checkout to save 10% off your entire order. They are the maker of the sleeves that I'm rocking here on the main deck. These are their uh, Minotaur sleeves. Very similar to the Pegasus sleeves if you've used those, but these ones have a very subtle texture to the back. And I honestly am a bigger fan of the Minotaur sleeves than I am the Pegasus sleeves. There's something about that little bit of texture on the back that I really, really enjoy. I don't know what it is, it's just personal preference. Fantastic 10 out of 10 sleeve and definitely competes side by side by some of the biggest name brand staples in the industry. So if you want some great sleeves, you wanna get them at a discount, support the channel in the process, definitely check them out. This play mat is from them as well. And this here power deck box from Chainsaw Man is going to be on sale on their website on January 19th, this is what it looks like. There's the uh, the top of it, there's the back, the hammer, there's the front, and this is what the inside looks like. Some pretty cool artwork on the inside. Very vibrant and colorful. And the thing about this deck box is it's a little bit slimmer, obviously, than their standard double deck box. This is the Quest Deck Box Awakening Wave, which is still available on their site. You can see it's a lot longer and a little bit shorter than this one. And this, uh, the power deck box is also a little bit thinner. So if that's something that kind of suits your preference when it comes to deck boxes, uh, this deck box might be for you also, especially if you're a fan of the show. They got a dice tray there, obviously a section for two uh, sets of double sleeve cards. I think 70 double sleeve cards per pocket. And it comes out again on the 19th. So if you wanna pick one up, definitely be on their site when it drops. I'll try to have more specific details either in the video or in the description or in the comments for those interested. Also, feel free to use my TCG Player affiliate link in the description of all my videos as well to support the channel at no extra cost for you. So let's go ahead and hop right into the profile. Enough yapping from me. We're going to start with the main deck, which I believe is 45 cards. We're not playing 40, which feels a little bit bad, but I think for this deck, it kind of works out fine and has worked out fine in the past for me. So we have first and foremost three copies of Rika Princess. Finally got my hands on a set of Ultra Rares, but this card is absolutely custom. There is no other way about it. Just during your main phase, you can special summon this card from your hand. Um, yeah, just literally a free special summon. But while it's face up, you are only able to special summon plants. Then it has another effect that says when your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a Rika monster, quick effect, you can shuffle this card from your hand or graveyard into the deck and tribute one plant monster, that's the cost, negate that effect. So it's just a free extender level four body which helps you access some of the best cards in the extra deck, whether they be link monsters or exceeds in the form of Strena. And it's also just a monster negate that can be pretty much live at any point in your combo so long as of course you have a Rika monster on field and the fact that it tributes and shuffles for cost is huge because it can dodge things like called by dd crow and bell etc kind of an insane card and definitely 
a worthy three of, in my opinion. Now, moving on for the Rick of Cards, we have two copies of Petal. This card, I think, is perfectly fine at playing two, just because we have other ways to get to this card. And this deck also has kind of like competing normal summons, where I think many of you know what the other normal summon is. That's, of course, Lokai, which I still think is still such a high power normal summon that we'd almost rather see that card over Rick of Petal. And, of course, Petal can recycle itself during the end phase of every turn so long as we have plants but during the main phase we can take a Rika from our deck either add it to our hand or send it to the graveyard and then during the end phase if it's in our grave and we control all plant monsters um, or no monsters we can just special summon it back so just free reoccurring advantage during every end phase and a lot of times your opponent will forget about this card coming back and it just opens up full combo for you next turn next up we have two copies of Rika or a mood on the Rika fairy this card is one of your best searchers, it gets you access to your Rika spells and traps, mainly things like Glamour, and most importantly, Con Con, and I think still having two is completely fine. First is mandatory for your normal combo, and having the second one for future turns to get into other copies of Con Con or Glamour is still very, very important, especially if your Con Con gets outed. Having another way in engine to that is super, super important, and it just special summons itself by attributing a plant monster. If it's normal or special summoned by the effect of a plant monster, you can add a Rika spell or trap. So definitely a worthy two of 100%. Then moving on, we have one copy of Snowdrop, the Rika Fairy, one of the better extenders in the deck. You can tribute one plant monster, special summon both this card and one other plant monster from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn except plant monsters. You can target one plant monster you control. All plant monsters you currently control become the, that monster's level until the end of the turn. So this card is great just because, I mean, you have this going for all Rika monsters, especially like uh, Mudan um, and the uh, Princess with its effect to tribute to negate. That effect to tribute things is really, really important. It plays super well under our field spell Rika Con Con and can trigger some of our other effects, mainly like Rika Strena, uh, which we'll talk about when we get to the extra deck. Um, but not only does it have the option to give us a opportunity to tribute something, whether it be our own cards or our opponents, uh, but it also gets us other plant bodies out of our hand onto the field that we might not be able to otherwise. And that's important, especially if we've already used our normal summon on something like Petal. Maybe we have Lokai in the hand and having the option to both resolve Petal and get Lokai on board in the same turn is super, super important. And Snowdrop is usually the way to do that. Same thing with Lone Fire Blossom. This card can bring that out as well, which gets us any plant in our deck, of course. And that level manipulation effect is super huge as well opening up rank eights and rank fours wherever we need them. And then moving on, we have one copy of Primeo the Rick of Fairy. I know some people have completely cut this card outright, but in my personal opinion, having another level four to be able to add off of Rick of Glamour is really, really important. And not to mention having sort of a one card rank four at your disposal at any point because you play Primula is also really nice in my personal opinion and how I've played the deck in the past. Uh, but yeah, basically it says if a monster control is tributed, except during the damage step, you can special this card from your hand in defense position. So uh, yeah, it's a free extender for the deck. It's not one card necessarily you want to draw, but it's just a card you're just going to want to have in your deck. It's a, definitely an additional extender uh, by every definition of the word, uh, but definitely, I think, worthwhile to play in the deck at the cost of occasionally drawing it in awkward hands. Moving on for other plant monsters, we have still the star of the show, three copies of Sunseed Genius Loki, one card combo still with one extra card added into the main deck, which you could argue is a brick, but it's definitely not a brick, honestly, in my opinion. I think it's like, it could qualify as a brick, more so engine requirement, but there's definitely been worse cards people have had to play in their decks. Uh, but this one normal summon, one normal monster gets you so much still. Um, it's insane, it's absurd, you gotta play three. And of course, with that, we still have to play the Sunseed Twin, which is, again, part of the standard combo. If this card is normal or special summon while you control a Synavalon Link monster, you can target one level four or lower plant normal monster in your graveyard special summon it. So this card allows Loki to be a lot more strong, a lot more powerful, a lot more explosive in the combo. And then it has a second effect, which actually can come up in this deck now with the way the extra deck is. You can banish this card from, um, in your graveyard and one Link monster you control. If you have two or more plant Link monsters with the same name as each other in your graveyard, you can special summon them. And that comes up now actually a lot more. It's really never came up in the past, but now with the extra deck being the way it is, 
that effect can actually come up, which is super awesome because it's a really solid effect. Next up, we have two copies of Lone Fire Blossom. This card is very, very versatile in this deck. It can just get you to any plant. And the fact that it can tribute other things too is really, really nice. While we can't use it with Con, Con we can still tribute off certain things on our board to get value out of it and bring out anything we need from our deck. Next up, we have arguably one of the most important and necessary changes that we had to make to the main deck post Forbidden and Limited list, and that is adding in one single copy of a Romage Laurel. This is a level one wind plant with 800 attack and zero defense. I believe it came out of Chaos Impact as a common, so shouldn't be too hard to get your hands on. And why are we playing this? Why do we need to play this? Now, I have seen some people also play the generator Mardell in here, but I'm not a fan of adding in another brick, which I think is definitely more so of a brick than this card is. But I think getting away with just this one Aromage card, I know there are probably others that you can play in here too that I've seen be played. I think bare minimum, Laurel is pretty much all you need to get this deck back into working order post list. So this card says if your life points are higher than your opponents, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you gain life points, you can target one non-tuner plant monster on the field. It is treated as a tuner this turn. And then the last effect, which is arguably the most important, is if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can gain 500 life points. So how does this card fix the combo? Well, it's plain and simple, really. I'll just kind of go ahead and illustrate this the best way that I can. Normally, in our standard combo, we would go into Jasmine after resolving, like, uh, Sewing and Healer. And then Jasmine would be on board, we'd have Loki and Twin, we'd link the Loki into Dryas, or the uh, Twin into Dryas, then Loki into Healer. Healer would target the Dryas, we'd gain 300, and that would trigger Jasmine to search, right, since we gain life points. But that requires obviously having a second Healer and a second Dryas, which you no longer have. So how do we continue to play from that point? Well, we'd still link into the Jasmine, but then we'd use Jasmine's other effect, tributing off the Twin, or the Dryas, or the Loki rather, it doesn't matter. And then we'd summon out a copy of Laurel. And then from there, we would link into a second Jasmine. And then the uh, Laurel would hit the Grave, procting its effect to make us gain 500 life points. Then triggering both the effects of Jasmine to be able to search us out a plant monster. So that's how we get around that problem of only having one Dryas and one Healer. Is by playing Laurel to trigger two Jasmine searches instead of just one like we did in the past. So that kind of, you know, makes up for what we lost in the extra deck at the cost of only playing one extra brick. So that's why we're playing Jasmine. I think there are other cards, of course, that you could add into this deck, like Mardell, and I believe there's one other Aromage monster that you could play in here, but that is adding a lot more engine requirements and bricks, things you don't really want to draw into the deck that I think are necessary. And I think you could just get away with just this one card in the main deck and be completely fine. It's also a level one plant, so there's some synergy with things like the Ricka Glamour being able to get this, or even off of one for one if you need to for whatever reason, just to link it off and trigger something like Jasmine to be able to search. And then last but not least, we have our Therion engine still, which consists of three copies of Therion Liliborea. Level 8 plant also searches us our Disc Coliseum, and with it our Regulus to help set up that crucial Omni Negate, which this deck has lacked at so many points in the past, not being able to stop things like Evenly Match, etc., has been a almost deal breaker in terms of this deck's competitive viability, but playing this engine definitely fixes that. Having the access to a searchable Omni Negate through a plant-based mean is really, really nice. So definitely wanna play the small four card engine or five card engine there. Now we're gonna move on into the spells and for engine, we have three copies of Unexpected Die. If you control no monsters, special summon a level four or lower normal monster from your deck, not a once per turn. So if you summon out Loki and they per se mirror jade it, you have another copy, you just play it again, summon out another Loki and keep comboing like nothing happened. And then next up we have three copies of Rick of Glamour. Now we have essentially with the Therian engine, we can search out Lily and Snowdrop. We can still search out Petal and Loki, but now we can search out Laurel with either Loki or Petal now that we have another level one plant in the deck. And for those that don't know what this card does, when you activate this card, you can also tribute one plant monster as cost. Add one Ricka monster from your deck to your hand. Then if you tributed a monster when you activate this card, add one plant monster with, a, with the same original level as that Ricka monster, but a different name. So if you add a princess, you can add a level four plant on top of that. In this case, it'd be Primula. If you added Snowdrop, you could add another level eight plant alongside that. In that case, it'd be like Therion Liliborea. 
And again, being able to tribute when we want to activate this card is very important because of the next card we are playing, which quite literally is one of the most bonkers cards ever created. Rika Con Con, which we are definitely playing at three, especially with the higher deck count. This is essentially engine plus a board breaker all in one card. It says if you control a Rika monster, you can set one Rika spell trap directly from your deck to your spell and trap zone. Also, you can add special monsters the rest of the turn except plant monsters. You can only use the effect of Rika, uh, Rika Con Con once per turn. Once per turn, if you would tribute a plant monster you control to activate a Rika card or effect, you can tribute any one face up monster your opponent controls, even though you do not control it. That's right. This is basically Layer of Darkness in a combo deck. It sounds crazy because it is crazy. Gets us access to Engine, and we can just outright go into a board, slap Con Con on the field, activate Mudon in hand, right, just as an example, and tribute over one of our opponent's Baron de Fleurs, whatever sort of interaction they might have, and just delete it instantly before they have a chance to respond because we do have to pay the cost first before our opponent has a chance to respond with anything, right? It's kind of broken. Like, even let's say our opponent had Solemn Judgment. We go activate Rika Con Con, they don't Judgment it, but then we follow up by playing Rika Glamour, tributing one of their Barons or whatever it may be, anything on their field could be Turbulence, could be SP Little Knight. If they had Solemn Judgment, we would get to tribute SP Little Knight before they even have a chance to Judgment. So they still lose a card regardless that's how powerful this interaction is and getting that little extra sort of search off of it is just the icing on top so definitely want to play three of those next up we have two copies of a sunvine sewing this is one of the main search targets the main search target off of the best link one in the extra deck hence why it went to one dryas uh not only is it a great search target part of the combo but it's also just sort of like a plant etel at the cost of a thousand life points Summon a Sun Seed monster from your deck, and if you do, you take a thousand damage. If you control no Sun Evelyn Link monsters, you can only special summon Sun Seed Genius Loki. And it has a secret graveyard effect that says, if a plant Link monster you control would be destroyed uh, by battle or card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. And uh, yeah, pretty solid card all around. And then one of the last spells for engine we have is one for one. This can grab your petal and your loci. Of course, it can grab the uh, Laurel 2 being a level 1, but obviously this is basically another starter for the deck at the cost of one discard of a monster. And then one Rika Sheet. This card is absolutely insane, especially with Con Con. It's basically like Widow Anchor on steroids. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Also, you can tribute one plant monster. Players cannot activate that face-up monster's effect on the field this turn. Then, if you tributed a plant monster when you activate this card, take control of that monster until the end phase. So basically, for example, you could activate Sheet, Tribute Baron, and then target SP Little Knight to take. That's just kind of how broken this is, or vice versa. Especially if you have Con Con up. And even if you don't have Con Con, it's basically just like an Imperm. Then moving on, we have three copies of Droll Lock here to start our non-engine. Now, this deck being 45 cards, having a lot of engine in of itself to play, um, doesn't have that much room for non-engines and hand traps, but I think that's fair enough because this deck actually has a pretty decent shot at being able to play through boards with its own engine. It's very resilient, especially when you take into account cards like Con Con, how many extenders we have, how many starters we have. So I think where this deck lacks in having tons of room for non-engine, it makes up for in its ability to just be able to go second. Three copies of Droll. Three copies of Ash Blossom, two copies of Triple Tactics Talent, and three copies of Imperm. Plain, simple, cut and dry, nothing super crazy there. And that is it for the main deck. Now we're going to go ahead and move into the extra deck here where arguably most of the changes have been made, mainly because we have a lot of extra room now. So first and foremost, we're going to start with three copies of Rick Estrena. This is where I decided to make up some of that room. I have played three Strena in the past, and while you didn't need it at that point, I think now with the extra room, you couldn't go wrong really with playing an extra copy of Strena. Although if you don't play it, I couldn't blame you. This could easily be a copy of SP Little Knight, but I know with how expensive that card is, people ask for a budget option, and I think just slapping in the third Strena is completely fine. The grind game that having this card gives you is so impressive not to mention having three in the extra deck now allows you to go for bigger better combos turn one because those combos typically require you to go through two strata in the first place and not having that third strata in case things go wrong feels really bad i know it from experience back when i first made the change from going three to two back in the day but being able to play three again and not have to worry about like 
cutting other really nice cards feels good. So I definitely don't mind playing three Strena back in the extra deck again. And then we have one copy of Hyperiton, one copy of Teardrop, and one copy of Alsei. So why are we playing these? Why are we playing a rank 9 if we don't have any ways to make it? Well, it all goes back to Strena. I should have read the effect. But basically it says you can detach one material from this card and then target a plant monster or rick a card in your graveyard at your hand. So there's that grind game there. If this card with Ixie's material is tributed, which of course our deck does a lot of tributing, um, you can special summon one rank 5 or higher plant Ixie's monster from your extra deck or the graveyard, then you can attach this card to it as material. So normally our end boards will end on a copy of the Strena so that we contribute it during our opponent's turn with things like, you know, could be anything from Sheet or could be anything to the copy of Princess when we go to negate a monster effect of theirs. We have the option, of course, to tribute their stuff, but tributing our stuff is still very beneficial because we can tribute something like Strena, which then can activate its effect to rank up into something like Hyperiton during our opponent's turn which can negate whatever type of card it has attached to it as material. So would be a monster negate. We can set this up turn one by getting a monster or a spell underneath it. So that gives us either a monster or a spell negate. We can go into teardrop, which is a quick effect tribute just by detaching. And it is a quick effect if it has a plant monsters material, which is pretty much always, always going to have. And then mandatory effect each time a monster is tributed, you can make this card gain 200 attack. And then all say, is a card that I have been playing in the deck, but I thought about playing Kanzashi just because this card is kind of neat to play in the deck. Its ability to interact with the graveyard is kind of cool, and there are some cool OTK lines with it and Teardrop. But I'll say is still a very nice card just because this deck still lacks a way to interact with spells and traps, and I'll say is one of the few, if not maybe the only, maybe next to Aurea, one of the only cards that can interact with things in the back line. It says once per turn, you can declare one card name, excavate the top card of your deck, and if you and if it is the declared card, you can add it to your hand. So if you get really lucky, you could just grab like a talents or something. Otherwise, send it to the graveyard. If a card is sent to the, from your deck to the graveyard by a card effect, except during the damage step, you can detach one Ixie material from this card, then target one card in the field, place that target on either the top or the bottom of the deck. So this card again can at, interact with field spells or spells and traps, mainly floodgates um, that our opponent might have set up. And speaking of floodgates, not really having to worry about there can be only one anymore is really strong for this deck, opens up a lot. Now I'm just realizing that because this deck crumbled under there can be only one but this card definitely is great for outing problematic cards like that um so yeah that's why i play it just because again having the option to be able to out spells and traps or mess up the opponent's draw on the next turn kind of keep the tempo in our favor is really really nice but again if you wanted to play kanzashi i definitely wouldn't blame you the card is very very cool and then now we go into our links where we have one healer one thrasher and one Dryas. That's right. The gang is all here. This is all it is. Uh, I know some people in the past weren't even playing Thrasher. They were just playing the two healer, which I totally understand because it's so crazy in time. But Thrasher is absolutely insane. Having this card in the extra deck allows Unexpected Die to be a one card OTK, I believe through one monster that your opponent has. So if you can stop them dead in the water and leave them with one monster or nothing, Unexpected Die turns into an OTK. I think maybe 8,200 damage or something like that. It's been a while but you need to have Thrasher in the extra deck. Now, the fact that we have room just to comfortably play it regardless is really, really awesome. So uh, yeah, Dryas, one level four or lower normal plant or one level four or lower plant to get into it. If it's Link Summon, you can add in the extra monster zone, keep in mind. Um, using Sunsea Genius Loki as material, you can add Sunvine Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. This card cannot be targeted for attacks, but does not prevent your opponent from attacking directly. Once per turn, if you take battle or effect damage, you can gain that much life points. And if you do special one Sunvine Monster from your extra deck, Sunvine Thrasher says, uh, takes one uh, plant normal monster to get into. If a Sun Avalon Link monster you control leaves the field by a card effect, destroy this card. If this card is special summon, you can target one Sun Avalon Link monster on the field. This card gains attack equal to that monster's link rating times 800. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can special summon that monster to your zone. A Link monster points to, but negate its effects. And of course, last but not least, one of the best cards in time in this deck is the Sunvine Healer. It takes one plant normal monster to get into. If a Sun Avalon Link monster control leaves the field by card effect, destroy this, this card. Very similar to the Healer. If this card is special summon, you can target one Sun Avalon Link monster in the field. Gain life points equal to its link rating times 300. When your plant Link monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you can gain 600 life points. Which honestly, I didn't even know it had that effect until just now. Moving on, we have not one 
not two, but three copies of Jasmine. Now, this kind of sucks because this card is a little bit on the pricey side, and I think it's one of the more expensive cards in the extra deck, maybe the most expensive card if you don't play SP Little Knight. I think it's around 17 or 18 bucks last I checked, but playing three is definitely mandatory. Well, I guess I should maybe put quotes around mandatory. You don't have to, but in the normal die combo or loci combo, I found myself making two of these obviously outright to trigger Laurel and then get both the searches. But later in the combo, you make a third one and you contribute off Strena to not only get another search or summon of a plant, but then you can trigger your Strena on the field or in the grave rather to rank up into Hyperiton or Teardrop without having to need another plant extender like Mudon or something like Snowdrop in hand to be able to do so. So having the third one does come up kind of clutch. So yeah, three Jasmine. While not 100% necessary, I would recommend absolutely playing three because I think it will come up in most certain combo lines, especially we're trying to end on bigger and better boards. At least boards that we were able to end on in the past before the ban list. Uh, then we have one set, Sylvan Dance Peon. This is your kind of like your plan B, and uh, we play quite a bit of plant monsters in the deck, so this card is very likely to hit. If this card is Link Summon, you can declare a number from 1 to 3 and excavate that many cards from the top of your deck. And if you do, you can Special Summon up to two excavated plant monsters, but they cannot be used as Link Material. And then it has another effect where you can target a plant engraved, and whatever plants it points to become the level of that targeted monster. So if you get like a 1 and a 6 and you've got a Princess engraved, you can still access Strena, which is really important with her level manipulation effect. And then we play one Sun, uh, Sun Avalon Melius. This card is crucial still to your... Uh, you know, your Sunbind combo, being able to bring back the Loki, and then ranking up or linking up into Bengal Answer, still one of the mainstays of our end board. During the main phase, quick effect, you can target one effect monster your opponent controls, take damage, equal to its attack, and if you did take damage, return to the hand. If this card is in your graveyard, you can banish two or more link monsters from your grave whose combined link ratings equal exactly four, and special on this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Important thing to note about this card, you cannot return a monster that has zero attack, because you need to actually take damage in order to bounce the card back. So important ruling when it comes to Bangalancer. And not only is Melius a good way to link climb into Bangalancer, but this is also, of course, a part of your OTK off unexpected die, and I guess so is Bangalancer as well. But yeah, that is it for the extra deck. Now the side deck. This is what my side deck looks like on Dueling Book, running three copies of the Spiritual Water, Water Art Aoi. Uh, basically a pointer of the Red Lotus at home, and also we can grab it at Thrust. We just need to end on Strena, and we can rip any card out of our opponent's hand, um, and of course at the cost of tributing Strena, which then ranks up into anything we need it to be. Three copies of Eden Match, really strong card, I think, going into the next format. Two copies of Triple Tactics Thrust. I know that card's pretty expensive. Feel free to put whatever you want in its place. And then for some Thrust Targets, well, it actually is getting reprinted, but, you know, gotta have those short prints, right? But for Thrust Targets, we have Lightning Storm, Change of Heart, Call by the Grave, and Harpy's Feather Duster. And last but not least, three copies of Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion to combat the ever-present threat that is going to be the labyrinth deck this coming format so that is gonna wrap it up for my rickus and avalon update it's been a while i hope you guys enjoyed it i will be doing a test hand video very soon just so you guys can sort of see how the deck plays going into this new format and the way the deck is built now um and just see how it combos it's really not so different than what we're used to we actually get more out of this combo um than we did in the past because of the double jasmine but of course again at the cost of that one main deck brick so yeah, that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Again, don't forget to check out the ways to support the channel in the description. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, we're going to kill signing out. We'll see you in the next one. And like always, a big thank you goes to our current Divine Level channel members who are Robin's Assistant, H8 Cyber, Misfit, Green, Cadillacs, and Pony Stark. Thank you guys so much as always for extremely kind and very, very generous support of the channel.